Hi, I'm Tim Richards. This is the fourth video clip I've put together relating to volume one of my Exploring Jazz Piano book. This one deals with 251 sequences and also left hand shells. In the second clip in this series, you may remember we went up the scale of C in four note chords like this. If we single out the chord on two, D minor seven, and then four notes higher, the chord on G, G7, and four notes up again, the chord on C, C major 7, we get the three chords that make up a 2 5 1. Minor followed by dominant followed by major, and notice they're going up in fourths or around the cycle of fifths if you prefer to use that terminology. Rather than playing the chords jumping around like that, if you invert the G7, play a second inversion, then they're all in the same place. And there we have our 2 5 1. If you play each chord for a bar, that makes four bars because we're going to stay for the two bars on the C major. We could also play C6 as our 1 chord. So there's the 2 5 1. It's one of the most common sequences in jazz, and jazz musicians often practice it in all keys, following a cycle. When we, when we do this, we're going to use a very simple style of left hand called shells. This is a style of piano left hand that was made popular by Bud Powell and Thelonious Monk in the 40s and 50s, and it consists of playing the outside notes of the chord. So for E minor 7, we just play the root and seventh. Now sometimes, instead of going down to A7 like that, you might play A7 as a root and third. And then back to root and seventh for D major. So, so that's just those notes, or D6 like this. So stringing that together. And the alternative way of playing them is just the opposite. Root and third on E minor, root and seventh on A, root and third on D. We're going to explore vertical improvisation around these chords with shells in the left hand. To make this work well, you have to try to connect the arpeggios of the chords as smoothly as possible, preferably by step. A step meaning a half tone or a, or a whole tone. So here's an example, just using root position arpeggios with shells in the left hand. Now, a lot of musicians would practice it around a cycle. So the next chord would be D minor 7 to G7, finishing on C. These are really important shapes to learn, and just to get your head around the fingering as well is really important. Now, in a more professional situation, a lot of players would spice it up with some chromatic notes, linking notes between chords to make them join a slightly more interesting way, or encircling the first note of each chord. So the following example encircles the third. I'm going to start on C minor. And I'm going to F7, and A is going to be my first note. I'm encircling the third of the F7. That gives me a really nice kind of bebop effect. Again. Then you'd go to the next one in the cycle, B flat. So the track 251 arpeggio workout gives you an opportunity to practice all these arpeggios and chord shapes with uh, the backing track. If you get rid of the piano, you'll just have bass and drums accompaniment. So I give you the phrase in the book. Then there's four bars where you can either repeat it or you can play your own phrase. If you get rid of the piano, of course you're on your own, you can improvise as you like. 
So this is going to be using two different cycles, the one starting on E minor and the one starting on A minor, three keys in each cycle. That gives you the chance to play these important sequences over the six most common keys that you really do need to know. track arpeggio workout we were improvising using notes that related to each chord symbol. Sometimes when you have a lot of chords it's really useful to look for key centers. For instance in the theme on page 122 which is a tune following a chord sequence commonly known as rhythm changes the chords go 1625 instead of 251 something like this. <laughs> There's an easy way to play those using shells, starting on root and third, B flat, G minor, C minor. Now those chords are diatonic to the key of B flat. In other words, we're not using any notes outside of the scale or key. That means we can play a scale of B flat and go back to playing horizontally. Try doing that kind of thing in triplets. And of course, although these shells are all given on the beat, you don't have to play them on the beat. As in arpeggio workout, you'll notice I was varying the rhythm of the left hand as well. So that's part of the whole improvisational process. You're not just playing the chords on the first beat of every bar they are interacting with the right hand. So that's horizontal improvisation for rhythm changes, two five ones. You're well set up now to deal with the situations you get in many jazz standards. Okay, so I think you'll find that mastering two five ones is really essential if you have any desire to play jazz standards. So you need to put in the time to practice them in all keys. In the next clip, we'll look at some more essential concepts, including rootless voicings and ninth chords.